I'll start with um, a section in um, my book, Random Possession. It's the last section of a poem called The Field for Blue Corn. <clears throat> Please stay a little longer, at least until the garden is turned, our old whimsical siege on arid land, where I have seen snow peas and columbine, even though not inert growth. Extra effort to keep a flowering vine as it is, entropy, is locked into our memory since we'd naively assumed flowering was natural. A sprout against its seed coat is the first battle, after the one with air. All the seeds seem to fall near the enemy. If I have failed to grow herbs in a knot, as in English gardens, some motley hardy ones may take and buckle the topsoil with incompatible roots. Please stay. Help me pace out the field for blue corn. If a winter has seemed to pass as only our shadows on a rough wall, weren't they blank and rough as apple petals blown over and over each other to drift in heaps on the porches. That was about 20, 25 years ago. I'll skip to my, to empathy. Um, for many years, um, I, would fly up to Alaska and uh, teach uh, poetry in their poetry in the schools program. And it was a period of um, compaction for me. And uh, I used the ice and the, the uh, density of the uh, Yupik people, what was happening in their transitions, as a way to talk about. Uh, my own dense spirit. So um, this was a series of works that um, was a collaborative text for, with uh, dance and uh, it's a luck and luck breakup. And it's the second part of that. Anyone who is all right would not be coming in covered with fog. It is a pattern when it is moving. When it is moving, collisions of things that happen produce a wavering but recognizable image that merges into the ground when it is still. It is a black diamond that condenses you mentally as it collapses. It is a black diamond on the ground, and the diamond is moving. Then it disappears when you look at it, yourself having no coincidence. The ground is covered with ice. Many holes in the ice are glowing with light. You could say one light is a slanting plank that interrupts the ice. It could be a bridge, except where new ice is closing it off into a small enclosure, like a holding pen or a bed. The human shines through from behind and below seams and holes in the ice. The human hovers like a mood. On a molecular level, the human remains as a delicate glittering accent on the dateline, like a light flashing upriver, which can only be seen by the first person who looks on it because her looking is equivalent to clocking its velocity in a chute or a tunnel to her. She considers these the unconscious lessons of a dominant force that is being born, and as it becomes, its being is received structure. 
First ice crystals, then heavier glass obscures the light. So she walks back and forth, talking to herself, in a white, soundless sphere past the trash of the village. She crosses pressure ridges which form a fringe between old ice and open water, and the ice responds to her haphazard movement. The snow is moving about the ice, some of it settling, some of it blowing. She notices certain portions are ice, while others are covered with snow, which is easy to make tracks on, and she is careful not to step on the snow. Twenty miles of frozen ridges buckle under snow, but when she travels under the ice, the ice would be like fog. Inside the fog is a jail fire. Flames lure a quantity of what is going to happen to her into equivocalness by softening her body with heat, as if the house she is in suddenly rises because people still want her. She prefers to lie down like a river when it is frozen in the valley and lies still but bright lines go back and forth from her mouth as she vomits salt water. This is the breakthrough in plain. The plain itself is silent. Above and behind the plain lies the frozen delta. Above and in front of her, fog sinks into the horizon with silence as a material so as she is walking among formations of rock. Once again, she can make a rock in a distant wash move closer to her, where it splays out like contents its occurrence there. Once again, her solitariness can flow into the present moment, although she seems to know what is going to happen. This is an image represented by a line of ice slabs facing a line of rocks. One rock seems a little heavier and darker than the others, but for now they are two lines of tinkling, unaccompanied voices. The rest can be correspondingly inferred as a line of rocks leading toward a distant mountain as into a distorting mirror which once again grows darker and denser, crossing over into mass for a while before returning to the little saxophone repetition with which it began, like rubble under her feet. Still anything can still happen. She is still unable to distinguish one wave from another. This is her nervous system attempting to maintain its sweep across the plain. Everything is still moving, and everything is still one texture, altered from sheer space to the texture of a wall. The root through tightens around the nervous system like a musculature. It floats like a black mountain against the night sky, although she will remember a mountain glimmering with ore. Then it darkens for her return. The river branches, and the sea has become blank as mirrors each branch of the river flows into. Um, I think that we were reading, my, my husband and I were reading an, an essay that said that you can't see a color unless it, it appears in, there's a place for it in the brain, and, and these things are always um, of changing and, re, and renewing. So I, I tried to write a um, poem about what a new color would be. And, I call it the ideal. And I'll, I'll read four sections out of the five. <coughs> 
I did not know beforehand what would count for me as a new color. Its beauty is an analysis of things I believe in or experience, but seems to alter events very little. The significance of a bird flying out of grapes in a store relates to the beauty of the color of the translucency of grapes. There is a space among some objects on a table that reminded her of a person, the way the bird reminded her, a sense of the ideal of the space she would be able to see. Beauty can look like this around objects, a plastic bag on a bush moving slightly makes an alcove, a glove or mist holding the hill. Time can look like this. The plane of yourself separates from the plane of spaces between objects. An ordered succession a person apprehends in order to be reminded. Two particles that make a continuum or ideal in how the space between them relates to a third event, as how clouds against a window pane admit space that continues to a cloud on the mountain, a sheath of a space of feeling in material sheaths of her body for a perceived order depend on your having felt the relation. A horizon forms around his voice through which no sound can pass. This voice is a feeling of remembering there was a situation in my dreams in which she would be alive. The event could occur. A line could differ from a part for a particle along a straight or a curved space. He sees a relation like a new language in accidental spaces between objects which we cannot. As if he were seeing a color that had not existed before. And then we can make the color. I make a relation in time between the hawk hovering above her on the mountain in sun, and sun on a crow over me, turning the wings gold. I think I am tracing the nature of the color of a feather, but I trace around a gold frame through which to examine the nature of a crow. A wren in grapes reminding her of the woman is how color belongs inseparably to your consciousness of her without being the consciousness. Gold on a wing bears the illusion of the content of a symbolic dimension. Light on a wing, not of a crow, solves this problem of content by being an anomaly. Then clouds lower the light. I didn't mean to read that section. I'm going to go to the next one. Here is the body of the person, his torso facing you, head and feet in profile. There is a twist of space between the front arm and the back arm. Time goes there. The arm that turns toward you is personal. The arm that turns away is the impersonal. These types of flows that built the space Go on building it where you are trying to live. She is making a line between the space inside a glove on the mountain and the moment of an orchid's harvest, a bird's movement from a box of grapes and a bird's silhouette suffused with gold, the scale of a bird and the scale of a man inside the event horizon of his oracle, where heads do not look at each other because each meaning that begins there flows into a different emotion. 
This is a description of the content of the apprehended space between objects on a patio table in the sense of being that it is a new feeling. It is more like a coincidence of focus where time is in the sense that it is a new color. It is more of an ideal than an anomaly. Richard Tuttle did that cover. And uh, I'm going to read a poem called The Doll. It's from the, four, the book is called The Four-Year-Old Girl. Oh, I think I'll, I think I'll read this one first. Um, I did a, I'm very lucky in my collaborations. And I did a collaboration with the artist Kiki Smith. Um, and uh, it would turned out to be about the endocrine system. So I'll read the last section of that poem. It was uh, jointly published by ULAE and um, Kelsey Street Press. When I, when I want, well, agreed to do the project, I was hoping that because her work is um, so concrete that I would be finding a way to do the narrative and the concrete, but in fact, she became more abstract. <laughs> there is a space. You see something at the far edge, and your eye going over this space makes a hole, like watery mass in a gourd the feeling of old organs no longer crucial to or inside themselves, while remembering people you loved, which flowed from the physical, about which you made decisions. To make this whole any object brings into being something not in nature, an interior measurement, yourself, not yourself, bursts of growth when you sleep. Her back bleeds, a spray of blood on the snow. She sits on her hands, physically preventing herself from scratching. The child, her sense of the world being crucial to or inside itself, of memory and specificity like script. B cells grow for years in a petri dish. The sick, immortalized cells don't know to stop growing. Where your eye goes over space to the horizon makes a hole. But where sky meets the earth, the fragment is not the same as a hole. Desert ferns covered with reflecting hair may insulate the fronds. Radiations of a state barely embodied then dissolving in counter-reflections of light. There's an engine. He cannot separate from the loved person to shed the loved body. The doll has eight sections. <clears throat> I was trying to think about um, with the border and what the edge of a fragment is and what the edge of a fragment as a border is and um, that became the border between life and death. Discourse on death contains a rhetoric of borders. Shape delimits your right of absolute property, existence, tracing your traits as the border of what belongs to you. You don't have to touch the border to know how it feels, whether a napkin or a rose petal feels softer. The border between you 
or the end of her life. Compare these in your mind without locating the border or experiencing death, using a subtler sense of contact. Subtlety that's part of a thing. The image of a rose grows fainter until only screen is left. As soon as the whole is determined by wanting her to stay, she's no longer what she feels she is, not determinable. Something abstract becomes a part. A mountain touches a cloud in clear sky, acquiring otherworldliness from light on the cloud. It has volume like a crystal, but weighs like a cardinal point. The lighted flank is revealed as distinct shape, so shape becomes a fragment. You drive toward it as the approach of the person. As soon as she's named, her presence can cross a threshold, whether she arrives physically. You photograph her doll, cut out the doll's head, enlarge to original size, and get the whole doll. The way her mind realizes possibility, as if the doll thought, and the girl became space and direction for it. The woman in the shape of a rock and its shadow by a tree is a hole that can stretch when light is lateral, like consciousness. Light from above the tree casts a pinwheel around the trunk. Even in shadow, light contains the past of waves which came from everywhere to reach that part. She touches her collar. The sleeper grows fainter on the screen. Images are real and time between is abstract, or this image of her marks real time. Her interval, like the stars, is real. They've no alterity with respect to themselves. She lies down with the animals, flowering trees, magicians, Common measure between her and the screen is an irrational number. I employ two symbolized realities, so connecting paths traversed by light make an edge. We're the other for this boundary. It occurs through physical contact, like a part detailed as a whole, as if a series of frames were the same as movement, when you change this point of space to a point in time, middle ground appears. Her dream is wonderful as a falling star of the whole. I want to locate the ineffable beyond middle ground. The doll consists of a tangerine, stem and two leaves for its head, a body of a potato, striped sticks for arms, and some lace around the potato. Flesh that's not suffering has form, occupying a subtle space that contains its own intuition. Inasmuch as it's formless, it doesn't provoke anxiety. If this little image is all there is and space around of no significance, we've the usual view of fragmentation. The line between thing and event transcends order, not the perimeter of a lesion in a photograph, a case in which she'd so many fragments to hold together, what holds became disorganized, not abstract. Cool crystal until electrons go through it as if it were dead. Light goes through branches of the tree, oxygenating blood. She sleeps in a red gown. People around her are the size of rabbits and birds. 
Tree trunks, water, people's clothing moved like waves. The dragon moves from a tendency to real occurrence. Nothing's needed to go there because my memory's not found at any site. She fades to the origin of the senses, variations of a person who both inhabits a ghost and cohabits with it temporarily. Night lights flash at this border. It trembles in unstable multiplicity of no context to stop it, like a footprint. An animal running leaps over me. Rocks in the sun laterally represent constellations and their shadows. You could say the extent of her being can map onto knowing, so being and knowing are identical in the infinity. The lighted boundary at which an interval is apprehended beyond its image or word is experience characterized by our relation. I mean, you are beyond subjectivity. There is an opposition, a work of mourning. There is a mirror relation, one beyond the other, an animal like a resplendent bird unfolded for her in the animal's space. What if the only concept of an interval were now? Moon behind clouds the same as a lesion? What if opposing another concept to presence were impractical as a border? Interval collapses from tendency to occurrence. The misty lighted edge calls for endurance or bliss other than opposing from both sides of a line, a part with no context for which is softer, light or the animal. It makes me hesitate as between poles of an alternative, like a peacock, the way non-duality looks in the face of her longing to a mother inconsolable before a blessing. I'm going to finish <laughs> with two new, newer poems, somewhat in progress. I decided to try to make a more concrete narrative. And This is called Dressing Up Our Pets. I sew a bright hood for my pet mouse. I make holes for the eyes, the nose, and ears. I stand it on two legs, and it stands on its own a while. My friend, the white mouse, is iridescent, not an image begun in my intuition as ready-found material. I sew a hood for the rabbit, eye and nose holes, sheathed ears. Its movement, the difference between a thing and its color, burdens the activity of dressing our pets. The mouse is old, but its image is light. Between its alleged color and its alleged visibility is a lining like the double of a mouse, latency, flesh. The surface of the visibility of family members doubles over its whole extension with an invisible reserve. In your flesh, what's visible, by refolding or padding, exhibits their being as the complement of possibility. 
since possibility is this situation as thought, as a universal. The sun is distributional on desert below us. Small trees are distributional, but not integrative. The moonlight is distributional and integrative. Pinions on the crest at dusk, separate figures, will become imageless. Integration of all the black trees, black animals, etc., night animals, domestic animals waiting at home. These innocents from nature are my attempt to draw near sacred feeling without others present, who are an unending movement that consumes tranquil ground. Then ground becomes like other people through the differences in their live forms. It's why I remember a span of light, not because of satisfaction, but framing, an interruption that will inhabit me, like what happened the other day when he forgot me. We went shopping, and then he just went on. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be sensitive, but that day, the usual stimulation, looking at fruits and vegetables, seemed to belong to him. I also should have experience, for how would I make my selection? Then panic set in. How old are you? Have seen a lot. You wait still hard to see. The audience integrates the man singing with what's visible behind them. He delicately rotates his hands to an emotion that's like a place. His rhythm is not a duration. He is not real like a star, but he has his own impetus of how the song goes at dusk Blue and red hands are contingently joined. Physical suffering, a margin, has no alterity, but you think his song caused your sad feeling, like your hand touching your other hand. A girl sings along, not knowing the words or tune, and enters your memory. That there's no present of what will happen to her is your expectation. Everyone is becoming great in proportion to a singer's spurious expectations, like so many good mistakes. During the concert, I wasn't happy. I wasn't prepared to listen to something so haunting and popular at the same time. I had expected a more fragmentary approach, given his sense of humor and embrace of emotional contradiction in the song. The next morning, several people told me the others in our party had been very happy there. At first, I wasn't convinced, but why not? So I became happy as well. A parachute on the desert open, blue-white with light, like eleven sheep head-to-head -head in a circle, asleep. Enjoyment of substance in real time involves clearings about which pivot opaque zones. Real is a span of visibility, inasmuch as your flesh is not chaotic, not of a contingency. If I stay here and you mean something to me, the part in common is disjunct from what you mean, like my hands touching. That you're telepathic means nothing, that you facts you can't know which still work in the connections of my experience. 
A rock and rain distributing water along its texture is my response to experience. Inasmuch as your flesh is an invisible interplay of disjunctions needed for identity, clothes are a texture. We meet near a hill you climb every day to water transplanted iris. Why don't you let others do that? Although I do not wish to separate from him, now due to the faults of compound phenomena being demonstrated, it seems he will disappear from my sight and hearing. The beauty of his song derives from the fact it represents something to someone. Any family that's concentrated in so far as it represents something may be taken for someone. Wherever there's waiting is this transference. The danger is you'll be deceived by the metonymy of my tender feeling, light and multiple. He goes to pick up the child after school. He remains a few moments talking with the teacher beside the loom. What does she want? Why are you telling her this? Glory, formless substance, circular dawn, like a child's drawing of stars or snowflakes and lines. Each line connects the same star falling, loop the loop. Or each line belongs to each star. My friend, the white rabbit, little mouse, squirrel, impatient, shaking off their clothes. This is also a new, new poem, somewhat in progress, and it's more, um, I tried to do more about a banal family narrative, but then, then it turns out it, it d didn't turn out to be my family. <laughs> so. This is my last poem. All the wretched images of rejection, abdication, and banality I dwell on. Shame at parties, gossip, etc. may well be true. My mother-in-law says, if I want to be happy, think of what others want. We're gathered in her apartment, red velvet couch, red chairs, gold and red tablecloth. I watch her broad back going downstairs, and space holds her passing. My brother's at the table, gold earrings, red tulip bending toward his glass of tea. His expression of dignity comes from space above his closed eyes, and rises into the room. My feeling is dignified by dark above him, though empathy for things missing is just abstract. Windows, doors are not surfaces on which images and data slip around. Look at my family, almost perversely wrong in how they're laid out. No ethos of being together, like cards from a disoriented gambler, which still have a reality that calls for play. I don't see us as individuals, but densities of events. Time of day, knowing what others think, attaching to dead relatives through children. The events have no narrative and break off in the present or near ground. I say what you take for granted, in which case, what are the risks of betraying myself, you, or being betrayed? An example is a sudden loss of authority, slapping my child. She falls down. 
that she's not able at once to resume her position, vacillating, suggests, after all, we're strangers. While this proof is fresh, I understand its meaning. I'm in no danger of altering it. Later, I trust memory and may apply our being strangers all wrong. I know what I was doing, where and how I lived then, like someone else's memories, I believe. There was a gap between event and person at medium range, not speaking directly from perception. Years of wandering could have been averted. The bell rings and a man delivers a dog made of flowers to me. My brother rolls over on his back, tongue out. He ordered the flowers. Our dog, whom the flowers resemble, bites his cuff. I re realize relating flowers to our dog is perfectly normal on his part, even though life hasn't turned out as he had hoped. Everyone entering the room exclaims, so cute. Except for instructions by phone, the technique of the florist was outside his control. It was part of reality, like Fluffy herself, though blurring with flowers makes her more universal. It's an unstable image in which style carves a difference in potential through which he hopes something will pass for him but he's exhausted. And I'm upset about picking up my daughter from her dorm at school. She enters in high boots with thick heels and a blue mini skirt, cut out against the linoleum, moving. She bends her knees and lifts an imaginary guitar. Her image has an inside and is experienced from inside. Space before I react enables her to store other images by subtracting what's related to me. This produces a blurring like camera shake. Door, windows are remembered, blurred. I tower above my mother-in-law in my white suit, voluntary, lost. My brother took the photograph in front of her apartment. It merges with the pre-existing context, but was never about my irrelevance dissolving into a context of our life. He climbs into a budding pear tree, faced, turned to us. He sees my head as continuous with a plain of crocuses and grass, dignifying the empty area around me. My daughter walks over in a silver wig, pearly nails pointing like lines of flight into pink air, twirling, spangling space as a material likeness of her aspiration. She moves the camera a little to the left, to the right. It's a refrain, not territory you mark out or try to find your way back to, afraid at night, or leave farewell. <laughs>